Welcome to the second Sunday of Easter. Let me first read the collect of the day. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> one God for ever and ever. Amen. The Gospel lesson today is taken from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. When it was evening of the day of resurrection, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he has said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, <clears throat> and that through believing you may have life in his name. Peace be with you. This was the message Jesus gave to his disciples after his resurrection. Today, we need this message all the more. In my daily prayers, one thing I ask for the most is peace. Look around us. Look how we all have been affected by the pandemic during this past year. Some of us more so than others. As to rock salt into the wounds, we also see the recent escalation of anti-Asian crime and violence. Many elderly and female Asians have been the victims. We are indeed living in fear and anxiety. On top of it, 
other tragic incidents also happen around us. I read that recently a young man pushed a child off the fourth floor in a shopping mall. The child was severely injured and had been hospitalized since. The perpetrator was caught later. When asked why he committed such a crime, his response was, I felt like killing somebody that morning. When I couldn't find an adult, I pushed the child instead off the fourth floor. News like this certainly adds on to the pressure and tension we are, we are already experiencing. Nowadays, we have to deal with nervousness, insomnia, stress, anxiety attack, and even manic depression, doing a real number on our physical and mental health. Here are three points I would like to share with you. First, deal with life, life's anxiety with a positive attitude. Take things easy. Not all pressures in life have to be negative. Sometimes they actually put us on alert, causing us to be more productive and bringing out our hidden potentials. We need to maintain a positive and optimistic attitude, transforming anxiety into motivation turning negativity into positivity. Second, use physical exercise to reduce pressure. Exercise is always good for the body anyway. When we exercise, we need to focus our minds. No wandering around all over the place. Release the tension in our body and mind. If you're not the kind to go to the gym, you can walk 10 to 20 minutes every day to relax yourself. I myself do some breathing exercise whenever I feel anxiety building up. I would fill up my lungs and diaphragm with fresh air and then breathe out slowly. This seems to be an easier way to reduce tension. Third, be willing to speak about the burden. Talk about it. You need to share the burden by talking to some people you can trust. Verbalize it and vent it, even if this doesn't present a solution. At least you let it out from your chest. Keeping everything to yourself is not exactly healthy anyway. Piling pressure on, your, on yourself can only cause you psychological problems. Different times in history have different issues and concerns. During the time of Jesus, it was a time of political strife and religious persecution. We can see how scared and freaked out the disciples were after Jesus was crucified on the cross. They were not sure if what they believed in would maintain its truth. Meanwhile, they were also terrified of the political and religious forces caving in. After all, that was how Jesus died a few days ago. The disciples were freaking out, all right, and so they hid. They were so afraid that they even couldn't recognize the resurrected Jesus in their midst, thinking that it was a ghost. Luke's Gospel has a rather vivid description of the appearance of Jesus. It reads, They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Jesus said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? 
You see, when we are under stress and pressure, we very well may lose our faith, replacing it with doubts and more doubts. It was important for the disciples to witness Jesus appearing amongst them after the resurrection. It fortified the disciples in their belief in the gospel because Jesus took the pressure, took the stress of those who believed in him. To us, generations later, this is one powerful witness. Jesus' resurrection and appearance made a huge difference in the political and religious scenes of the time, resulting in the gospel being spread from Jerusalem to all corners of the earth. This was the command of Jesus before he ascended to heaven. He commanded his disciples to bring the gospels to everywhere on earth and that repentance and forgiveness of sins are to be proclaimed in Jesus' name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. We can sum up Jesus' appearing to the disciples in five points. One, life in a fellowship. Two, peace be with you. Three, Upon seeing Jesus, the disciples were overjoyed. Fourth, to be commissioned. Five, to receive the power from the Holy Spirit. We face stress and, and anxiety in our daily life every day. Too often, we rely on our own human efforts to deal with the problems resulting in nothing but fear and dread, which at times are more than what we can bear. It is only through our trusting in Jesus and his power that we can find assurance. But, but you need to let Jesus into your heart in the first place. Accept him as your resurrected Lord and accept the power of the Holy Spirit in order for life's stress and anxiety to be relieved. The Lord is risen indeed. Peace be with you. Amen.